Um, here are the kids practicing. Um, this one up here is Maddox Yang. He, he's just in love with Kamai Din's husband since kindergarten. He's now a third grader. And he's the one I promised that I would bring the coconuts to. So he's actually teaching some of the students, you know, what they need to do and how they need to connect and how to turn their heads. Um, I think I have a video next, a little bit of their work when they're practicing. I can't see. Here's one. So here's different students. Um, this is Maddox. <laughs> six or eight weeks and other students were playing the Kamai instruments, learning Sara Kakao. I am not a master so all of my students were playing the same melody. I, some of them hopefully we will be able to either get a grant so that they can do an after school program and have longer than 10 minutes and they definitely would be able to do the, the songs that we were playing too. So these, I have a few students that I can show you uh, in the beginning when they were yeah. learning. That was the Roniet. This is Lena working on the Kung Chuchi. And then she's kind of working on the ending there. And Michaela working on the Kung, actually it was the Kung Tung. The Kung Tuchi is the lighted one higher pitched. Oops, I thought I had one more. That's okay. All right. So here is our International Day performance. We actually pulled in some other students. This is Nana. He's recently come from Africa. My classroom seems to be the, land, the, the landing point for many immigrant children. I think they realize quickly that they don't need to speak English to come and make music. And so in the morning, I have children from all over, ukuleles, whatever they can do. So here's the actual performance. We have students in the background playing the ching. We had the, the score tom and the sampo drums and the students were playing and they I don't have a recording of it but it was lovely and I, I do have recordings just people don't know how to share them on Google Drive yet so what we do we do have it um, recorded we also have that's the performance these kids um, Maddox is not only as we met many people in Cambodia who just seem to be creative in many ways that he's also an artist he makes sculptures he does all kinds of things so i'm sure some of you will be seeing him later so he drew this he was so excited that he drew a little poster and brought it in the day of the performance here's our principal jason de carlo introducing the students and telling maddox's story and there's maddox taking the, all the accolades for te helping to teach the other students and here is a video of the coconut deed so part of it okay this is about this is on april 23rd our international day the costumes came from a colleague of mine. She said, well, I don't have the wrap kind of take too long, but here, try these. So we just put them up. Also, again, you should have an odd number. Um, I had 12 students. I wasn't gonna tell two of them they couldn't dance because we needed you know, five sets. So we have an extra set of students. And so that's okay. All are welcome. <laughs>
happy that they were able to do it. And again, some kids would, you know, just move in their coconuts. Other kids have a lot of um, coordination with the stylistics. So next year we can maybe take a time where just the boys work together and they work on those little, the head should be tilting. So there's so much more we can do. I think it was a great beginning and they were thrilled. And our, prince, our assistant principal is just wonderful at celebrating children. So here they are and there they are. They were very happy <laughs> with their performance. Going on to next steps for my curriculum and community outreach. Um, we can develop and refine the coconut dance. We can seek volunteers in the community. A lot of said my mother would, so, you know, knows this dance or danced it. So we could have someone come in if we had um, maybe several class periods. Those children are all in different classrooms, so that's the difficult part. Um, so my, my goal is perhaps a simplified coconut dance where they can all learn one part of it and then improvise the movements for a B section and come back to that. Um, the A section would be a nice project for students in class. Then I could do it with an entire class if we didn't have a performance goal in mind. For Pin Pete, we really need to seek some funding so that we can have Master Song Pen come and teach the, in the students who show promise in the exploration, and that's really the goal for that, um, for traditional Pin Pete music, because we still need to work on keeping that alive. Um, improvisation and composition in my grade four brings me up to the circus. Um, my little aha moment, my epiphany, was when I went to the circus and we heard, um, it was the self pack from low, I think I have it on the next slide. Yes, okay. Fair, Fair from low self pack art school in Batanbang. There are students from elementary through, I think about a thousand students from elementary through high school and early college age in this school. And they can study music and dance and arts, drawing, painting. Um, I did find a coloring book there that Maddox was so excited to see. Um, so we saw the circus playing over here, and then I'm going to have you listen to the music and see if you can make the connection from the music I, that we played earlier. So here's what they were doing on the stage. The over here on the right where the ensemble was. You'll see they've got the kung tung up on stilts so they can stand up and play it. They've got some of the other traditional instruments, but over here there's an electric guitar and back here's the drum set. And I said, oh, we can play it with, with, with our modern music. So I was very excited there. And if you listen, this just fits so well into my fourth grade improvisation unit because they're just repeated motifs. You'll hear everything eight times. They do eight times and then they move on to a new one eight times. We don't have advanced musicians, but we have one group who can play their part eight times, and the other group can play their part eight times and go back and forth, and that's what we're working on now, and they're having a lot of fun. The instruments are a little bit too delicate for me to allow every student to work on it, so we're using our xylophones, ukuleles, recorders, but when somebody has something really beautiful, I say, can you go find that on that? And then I just invite a few students to play, and that's how we'll incorporate them into our um, current curriculum. And so you'll hear these motifs just over and over. a few videos and some CDs so we have great examples to show the students and what child is intrigued by circus so it's a great motivator and um, it makes them really feel when they have a goal oh we're doing something that's real real life application they really take it more seriously so I'm excited to be doing we're starting this year but I have new ideas for next year and finally um, we have the documentary project that we talked about uh, Ian Koss is right now pursuing a master uh, doctor in ethnomusicology at, um, in Boston, and he and Heidi Shin are co-producers of a documentary for NPR where they're exploring how music experiences can connect students from immigrant families who've been displaced through war or other um, conflict uh, to their parents and grandparents, to their cultural history, to their community. And so they've already, they were, um, Heidi was there on the International Day, um, she may have a recording of the Pin Pete. She saw their performances, but she also was able to talk to the students and she's going to come back in a few weeks and she has certain students like Maddox that she wants to 
connect with a little more deeply and some students the stuff most of that we've talked about I'll have to connect it so um, that's exciting too because it, it helps the students to see that other people are interested in the work we're doing and that when she asked the students why is this important they really had some great answers well it's important because people don't know about this because our parents maybe don't talk about this and so it's important to know our history and know who we are and, and one one boy finally said it gives us pride it gives us pride in ourselves and our culture and so those are the you know that's the goal to know who you are and to sh and to know that other people are interested to preserve it and share it so that's where we're going okay thank you